hello everyone. I thought I'd do a health update. And also, like I, I speak about this a lot, this, this channel I use sort of like as a, as a diary as well. Um, and it's good for me in the future to look back at um, situations and my thoughts and feelings at that time. So health update. Not good. <laughs> Not good at all. Um, so I've got two main diseases. I've potentially got three, um, but one sort of an undiagnosed um, disease to do with my immune system and DNA. Um, so I've got an autoimmune disease called sarcoidosis, which is basically uh, something entered my body, whether it be virus, bacteria, gas, chemical, whatever, um, and turned on my immune system. And the immune system doesn't stop, so it carries on attacking. So I have that in my lungs. So it's an overactive immune system, it keeps on going. The, the downside for that um, with me is my immune system carried on going for so long that it gave me cavities and, and scarring um, within my lungs. So I'm, I'm down to, I think it's about 48% of my lungs left, but function about 38% lung function um, because of the scarring stops some of the function as well. So I basically lost half my lungs. Um, the other disease I've got is aspergillosis. So that is a fungal infection which is growing inside um, my lungs. Um, if if that gets too bad, that's or grows rapidly. That's so that's, that's a terminal disease. Um, there's no cure for either of them, and. The way you want to treat both is different. So sarcoidosis, you want to dumb down my immune system, turn it down, so it no longer attacks me. And aspergillosis, I need to have a strong immune system to help, these glasses keep slipping, they drive me insane. Um, aspergillosis, you need to have a strong immune system to fight it, as well as taking really powerful antifungals. Over the last, I'll say since December, I've, I've noticed that um, I've been getting skin flare-ups. So with me, I get um, my skin flares up on my face, my neck, um, and, my, and, my, and my scalp when my sarcoidosis is active. Um, and it's, it's basically like a sign of my body going, we're inflamed. I'm going to take this off because they keep just slipping off my nose. Um, it's my body's way of saying you've got inflammation in your body. So since me first noticing that in December, um, I've had a few tests, um, loads of x-rays, loads of blood tests, CT scans, PET scan, bone scan. So the CT scan showed a lot of activity within my lungs and on my bones. So the bones were my pelvis, spine, ribs, collarbone. Um, I then had a PET scan and so a PET scan is basically just like a stronger CT scan, they, they get far better imagery. You have um, like a radioactive injection that then binds to the parts of your body that are inflamed or um, diseased in some way. And then that showed basically my whole right lung is uh, <laughs> in a bad way. Um, so the sarcoidosis is active enough all the way through my right lung. Um, the readings were too high for the PET scan to, to read. I basically went over the limit. Um, they also um, showed growths on my um, bones. 
and um, they don't really know what to do. <laughs> so, um, two sets. The aircon's just come on. I'm gonna close that door. Yeah, I thought I'd turn that off because uh, it's loud. You can tell by my breathing. Obviously, my lungs aren't working properly. Um, yeah, they don't know what to do. So the problem is, for the sarcoidosis, they need to give me really strong um, immune suppressive medication, sort of like chemo style um, drugs, to knock out my immune system, to allow the inflammation in my body to, to calm down. Um, and then hopefully my immune system would come back and it wouldn't keep attacking. If they did that, the fungal infection would, would basically probably more than likely kill me. Um, it, it's, so the fungal infection I've got is a risk for people that have um, chemo anyway. So if you've got cancer and you have chemo, one of the risks is that you get the um, fungal infection I've got and it, and it rapidly grows grows through your body. Um, yeah, so they're a bit stuck on what to do. So I've been put on like a maintenance dose of um, immune suppressive medication um, whilst they try and figure out what to do. There are some new drugs that they're looking at, um, but as it stands, it's just a waiting game. So, yeah, there's not really, <laughs> not really a lot more I can say about that. Um, so what am I doing? Well, I've lost a lot of weight, which is always a, a concern when you've got any type of illness. So at the moment I'm trying to bulk back up healthy, in a healthy way. Which if, you, if you're smart, it's, it's relatively straightforward to be honest. Um, I've started trying to sort of work out and work my lungs out so I've got some sort of reserves um, there and just exercise really I've cut I've cut out all types of food that are known to cause inflammation in the body which is basically just processed foods refined sugars we, we all know to be honest if it comes from a packet don't eat it um, well don't eat it if you're worried about inflammation in the body um, yeah I'm just trying to be healthy and wait and see um, what happens. So I do have things at home like, um, I have oxygen at home um, in, in case I ever need that. I've only really had to use that twice, I, I think. Once I actually used a whole bottle, I just couldn't breathe at all. And then another time, a few, like after exercising, like a few times, my, my oxygen levels are dropping, like I don't know. Um, I don't know what it's going to be now. Let's have a look and see. Um, so yeah, my oxygen levels keep dropping. So I'm, I'm a bit nerdy when it comes to facts and figures and those type of things. I've, I've been recording my oxygen levels for six years, seven years. Um, like nearly daily. Um, and when I used to work out at the gym, um, or anywhere, it doesn't have to be a gym, when I, used to, when I used to work out, I used to just do it continuously, like before I'd do an exercise, after an exercise, see my recovery rate, that type of thing. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of getting back into that as well, like being really methodical, so I can work out and see if there's any type of improvement. So my current rate, do you know what, we'll do a test. I'll take it now, I'll walk downstairs, walk back and I'll show like, how much it drops. So basically a healthy person will be 99 uh, on this. Um, relatively healthy you'd say 97 to 99. If it's below 96 or 95 for a healthy person there's um, a problem, go to the doctors or hospital. And if it's below 90 yeah, there's, like a, there's, <laughs> there's like a serious problem. So um, I keep talking and bouncing, so it's not reading it. Let me try and get it to read. Let's try again. My current oxygen 
So it's always the way. This is actually the highest it's been <laughs> for about three weeks. It's 99. I don't know if you can see. Uh, can you see? Probably not. It's not going to focus as it's focusing on me. You have to wait for it. It's 99. Right. So I will walk downstairs and then come back. Someone knocked on the door. <laughs> and then I got upstairs. <laughs> and then it turned itself off. Um, <clears throat> right. So you can tell me I'm breathing. Um, so currently 87, 88, it's not focusing, 89, focus, 93. Uh, so the top number is my heart rate and the bottom is my uh, oxygen. It's now 95, 96, 97, 98, so 97, 96. So like now it's sort of sort of back, but I'm still <clears throat> obviously trying to get oxygen in. So that's just walking up one flight of stairs, and it's just literally like this doesn't expand at all. Um, and then this is obviously well not obviously, but this is inflamed, so not as much comes in. And you know, you're relying on the muscles and your lungs expanding to suck the air in. And when this part doesn't move, it's only the bottom part that's moving and it's all inflamed, I just can't get the oxygen. <coughs> so yeah, so I end up sounding like this. <laughs> so, um, I'm hoping to, well, not hoping, it's the wrong word. I'm gonna improve my lung um, recovery rate, is what I'm gonna say. I can't make my lungs work better, um, but I can make them I can make my body not need as much oxygen. Um, it's on 98 now. I can make my body not need as much oxygen or recover quicker from not having the oxygen. I also need to put on um, weight and more muscle. Um, the medication I'm on now is, is muscle wasting as well. So um, <clears throat> I need to make sure that I'm putting, the, putting muscle back on. Um, and again, because muscle helps with the absorption of oxygen and all that type of stuff. And there's, there's quite a few um, uh, medical studies that relates the size of your quads to um, your lung health, lung function. Um, so, Zoe Wright. <laughs> Anyone knows Zoe Wright? Zoe Wright, your lungs must be amazing. Um, yeah, Zoe's got amazing quads. So, yeah, it's just... Basically, I'm, I'm going to have to try and pretend that I am um, don't have uh, chronic illnesses, which with that comes chronic fatigue. I need to try and trick myself into thinking that's not a thing and um, really, re really push myself, push myself to the limits so I can get to the point where there's some sort of um, benefit. So yeah, that is health update, pretty shit. Um, what the doctor's doing about it, don't seem to have a clue. <laughs> and uh, what I'm doing about it. So I'm probably going to document, I say the word so a lot. Um, I am going to document, you can see that my breathing is nearly back to normal now. So that was what, 90 seconds probably, just from one flight of stairs. Um, what was I saying? Forgot. Anyway, I will probably document um, a lot more about um, sort of my, my fitness, how, I can, how I'm getting back into shape. Um, this camera angle is different. I feel like I'm further away now. About putting the weight back on, I at least need to put on about 12 pound, I would say. Um, of which I want about 10 pound that to be muscle, which is gonna be interesting. Um, anyway, that's the end of my health update. Um, Thank you to everyone that's asked, and to future Stuart, remember when you felt crap, you did it. <laughs>